this video, you are going to learn how to use the Line 6 Helix in your worship ministry. I'm here with Brian Wall at the Worship Tutorial Studio, and he is going to walk us through step-by-step step how to get the Helix up and running, how to start building our own patches, and how to actually find some pre-made patches that are gonna help us achieve a great sound for our worship guitar rig coming up. And this video is fairly long. We go really in depth to how to get this system up and running. So check out the description for timestamps to different parts of the video, as well as links to all of the, uh, the gear that we're going to talk about and the patches that you can download for your Helix. My name is Jake Goslin with churchfront.com, helping you lead gospel-centered and tech-savvy worship. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry. And today I'm here at the Worship Tutorials headquarters with yes. the one and only Brian Wall. Hello. So make sure you check out the Worship Tutorials channel if you haven't already. Make sure you subscribe. He's always coming out with great tutorial videos on worship songs, hence worship tutorials. And he really dives deep, uh, even much deeper than what we're gonna have time for today into this type of gear that we're gonna talk about. I wanted to have Brian on my channel to educate me and uh, you guys as well on the Line 6 Helix modeler for electric guitars because it seems like we've come to a time and a place uh, with technology today yeah. that we don't need those uh, analog pedals. I mean, th yeah. they could be useful, yeah, but, pedals, yeah. but we have um, these modelers that basically take the place of those old school analog amps and pedals mm -hmm. um, and we can create some amazing tones for uh, worship guitar. Yeah. So Brian, um, can you just unpack for us a little bit more why why did you choose to, to make the switch to using, yeah, using sure. the Helix modeler? You know, growing up, I always played like an amp and a pedal board. Well, I kind of switched between back and forth. So back when Line 6 had the little bean pod, you remember the red bean? Yeah, yeah. Were you into that stuff? I never did it. No, I, I, had I did all the boss. I, I get all the boss pedals and okay. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So I had the pod two, the red bean. And then I, you know, from there, that, that's been like 15 years ago. Yeah. And since then, I've kind of gone back and forth between like a tube amp and a pedal board and a modeling solution. And before I had the Helix, I would either in church, I would either run an amp and a board or I ran the HD 500X, mm -hmm. kind of just back and forth between those two options. When they announced the Helix, I've always been a fan of Line 6. When they announced the Helix, I pre-ordered it like the day after it was announced. Mm -hmm. So I've had this, this, I've had this Helix uh, since it was released, so it's been maybe two, three years ago, mm -hmm. and um, I have never looked back. I don't own a single amp anymore. I have pedals, but they're they're scattered all about this room, so I don't use them anymore. Um, and really, the reason is this thing will do everything an amp and a pedal board solution will do, yep. um, and microphones and preamps and everything. Wow. And it's such an easy solution because you can just direct. I mean, it has XLR outs or a quarter inch outs just direct to your board and you get the same sound in, in everywhere you go, really. So for your setup, for your because yeah. you play a lot of lead electric guitar at I your do, church yeah. right now, you have your electric guitar and you plug it in to this modeler yep. and then it goes straight into the sound system. Just straight XLR out, yep. No amplifiers, no, which is great. I don't, and I don't have a speak. You can hook it up to a speaker Mm -hmm. So you can hear like mm -hmm. like a, like a cab, yeah. But I don't I don't do that because we use inner monitoring, which yep. I think a lot of people are doing. Yeah, yeah. and not having an amplifier on stage, uh, it just reduces stage volume, makes it easier. Yeah, to, and to and mix. a lot of churches are like forcing guitar players to do it because yeah. they don't want stage volume. Or you're in a small church and a tube amp is like stupidly loud. Yeah, even a 15 watt tube amp is yeah. really loud. Yep, yeah. uh, and it's just too loud, and you really can't. I mean, those amps don't sound good unless you crank them up. Yeah. So, so as a worship leader who plays acoustic most of the time, but I'm wanting yeah. to venture into just getting my this electric guitar back out. Guitar, by the way. That well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But if I want to use it, well, like, so I could use it with my acoustic. Right. But say, let's say, like I'm really focusing more on like I want to start utilizing electric guitar yeah. and emulating those sounds we hear on sure. the latest worship albums. So why is it that the Helix is mm -hmm. is like the best? option for for most worship leaders out there because it seems yeah. to me in my perspective this is like the most popular one it's probably the most popular there are other ways you can go mm -hmm. and and i have a lot of those other solutions too like you can go kemper 
you can go Axe FX, Frac, you know, AX8. But in my opinion, for the price point and the feature set you get with the Helix, this the Helix floor is sixteen hundred dollars. Okay. And then you can get the LT for around a thousand or less than that stuff used. Mm -hmm. um, and just what you get for the money, really nothing else competes with it, in my opinion, okay. as far as the price point goes. But even at fifteen hundred bucks, uh, mm -hmm. this guy, it, it, which is a significant investment, but I guess you have to consider like you're not having to buy what an amp replaces, and all these pedals, yeah. right? Which could add up to even, way so more than that. So it's more than just amps and pedals that it replaces. So mm -hmm. you've got like a tube amp, which a cheap tube amp, like an affordable version, is going to be like three to five. $500. Yeah. And then it replaces your entire pedal board, mm -hmm. which would be multiple overdrives, delay, reverb, compression, any kind of modulation like chorus, tremolo, anything like that. Mm -hmm. It replaces the actual board because you have to buy, you then have to buy like a piece of hardware to put things on. Yeah. You have to buy power supplies. Yeah. All right. You, you maybe you buy one power supply that powers all your cables or all your pedals and you have to buy all the cables to hook yeah. it all up. And then if you want to mic, if you want it in your church amplified, you also have to have microphones. Yeah. And it replaces all of that. So when you think about what it replaces, it's well over, even budget stuff, it's well over $1,500 worth of equipment yep. that it's replacing. Yep. And it sounds as good or better in most cases, in my opinion. Yep. Yeah. No, that's, that's super helpful because I, I, we, we're all thinking about this. We hear those price mm -hmm. tags. We see those price tags. It freaks us out a little bit. Yeah. But I think that does justify the things that it's replacing and the convenience you have in this one package. Mm -hmm. um, super, super helpful. So um, let's talk about now. So it, yeah. if I'm ready, if I have the funds, if I have the $1,500, i am ready to go. So what, what all do I need to get to, to start getting this up and running? Or give us kind of a step-by-step -step process of, of what we right. need to do. So this is pretty much all you need. You need this and a cable okay. <laughs> to plug your guitar into it. Awesome. But um, like when you, so I can show you like when you just start going, uh, let me go to like a blank preset. Like it looks like this yep. on the board, right? Okay. And so the first thing you would do when you get it is update all the firmware and okay. download the software from Line 6, which is all free. Okay. So you, it has a USB connection that goes from here to a computer. Okay. And so uh, that allows you to update the firmware because Line 6 actually adds new features to it. And so the first thing I would do is update the firmware and then you can start building patches from there. So yeah. you're, you're going to need, the most important thing in my opinion that you need when you first get started is how you're going to monitor it. How do you listen to it? Okay. So there's no speaker or anything. So you, um, you can have headphones. So there's just a headphone out in the back, mm -hmm. which is probably the way a lot of people are doing it. Um, or what I like to do is I hook it up to my recording interface, yep. just via XLR out, yep. and then I listen to it from my monitors, my yep. studio monitors. Yep. And so, but you can just plug a pair of headphones in and start listening to it, which is great because you can play completely silent, you know, yep. practice and stuff. So the hardware part of this is super simple mm -hmm. and now with the software you get it you have this blank slate but yeah so but built into it does it already come with all these different so it has effects? a bunch of presets okay yeah the, the, all the effects are already in there okay and it has a bunch of presets okay that mostly don't sound very good okay <laughs> if i had one if i had one point of advice to line six is make presets that sound better yeah yeah <laughs> at least for the style of music that we play modern praise and worship stuff yeah. um so you would you probably don't want to use the built-in presets although i think a lot of people i think that's why maybe a lot of people have a bad taste in their mouth for line six products mm -hmm. it's because they pull up the the stock presets and they don't like the way they sound yeah myself included yeah but the tones are in there and okay. so um, yeah, once you have this blank slate, you can start building stuff. So how about now you show us how you would actually go about building a yeah. patch? Maybe just throw in like two or three sure. effects in here in this preset okay. um, just to show us what that process looks like. Yeah, so if you're going to not go with the stock presets, you got a blank one and there's nothing in it. You get a tap tempo and then uh, a mode. And it depends on how you set up your global settings, which we can talk about in a bit. But what I would do if I were building just a really basic patch out, I would think about it like you would, you know, the, the real world equivalent. So I would want a volume pedal, a compressor, maybe a drive or two, mm -hmm. an amp, reverb, delay, right? So let's just do one of each. So the first thing is, is a volume. So if you hit this button, it brings up all your available effects. So in there, in there, Categorized. So you got drives or distortion, dynamics, EQ, modulation, delay, reverb, pitch, filter, wah, amp, amp cab, cab, 
impulse response and volume. So let's go volume pedal. So it's right here. Uh, I think by default, it's assigned to expression two, but you can go reassign it to whatever controller you want. Um, but I like expression pedal two. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so now when we move this up and down, it's turning the volume up and down. Okay. Okay, the next thing I would put in here is a compressor. And I know the Helix pretty well, and I know that I really like the deluxe comp. And so you have different options. Did I miss it? Dynamics. So uh, you have different options for compressors. So this is like the red is like an MXR compressor. Mm -hmm. LA Studio Comp is like an LA-2A. This is an exotic uh, compressor. Mm -hmm. But I like the deluxe comp a lot, so I would add it next. And I don't need access to it. Okay. So, so far, nothing is assigned to our foot switches. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I would do is overdrive. So come down here to distortion. And one of my two of my favorites in here are the Tim or the the Minotaur, which is a clon. So I'll just put it here, and I want to I want to be able to turn it on and off. Mm -hmm. So these buttons are all touch sensitive. So uh, you just touch and hold on a button, and it says, "Do you want to assign this effect to that button?" You say, "Oh, we waited too long." You say yes. So now my clon is assigned to this switch, which yeah. turns it on and off, which is awesome. Yeah. Let's do one more. So let's do. Uh, a tube screamer, which is classic. Put it here. Okay. Okay, so now we have a clon and a tube screamer. Accessible. Okay. The next thing let's do is an amp. My favorite amp in the world mm -hmm. is a Vox AC30. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna come down here and these are all the amps. There are tons of them. They will cover a lot of ground. So um, let's go with the AC30 Fawn Normal my favorite amp in the Helix, Okay, one of them. Uh, that or the Matchless, those okay. two. Anyway, now that amp is there, and then you have control of all the parameters here. Okay, we won't get into that for now. The next thing you want is a cab, and uh, you can just use the stock cab if you want. Let's just say we want a uh, the Matchless cab, which sounds really good, the G25. It's my favorite one. Okay, and then you can change what mic you want on it. I like the 20 dynamic a lot. It okay. sounds really good. But you kind of have to have a working knowledge of what all this stuff does, Yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, next thing is, uh, let's just go down to this next path. So we have a little more room to work with. Uh, let's add some re uh, delay. So we're gonna put a delay in. I like the tape delay a lot. Uh, and I want it to be dotted eighth. So you can change that here. If you push this button, it goes between milliseconds and subdivisions. Mm -hmm. Dotted eighth, I want it to be up here. Okay, that's my dotted eighth delay. And then you can make these say whatever you want. Yep. Change colors. And it's easier to plug your computer in. Oh, it's way easier to do this on a computer, but it's not yep. difficult to use the unit too, which is yep. really nice. Yep. Because if you're on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. you're not going to lug a laptop with you and plug it in. No. And it's so like, if I want to change, if I like say I'm playing and I'm like, I need a little more brightness out of my tube screamer. Mm -hmm. When I turn it on, you just touch it. And now you have access to the controls. Okay. It's super handy. Yeah. Now I've never worked with a modeler that is that easy mm -hmm. before. Minotaur, same thing. If you want to get to the amp, that button right there always goes to your amp. Okay. And you can change whatever you want on the amp. Nice. It's really easy to change it in the moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we got a delay. You can add more delays if you want. Mm -hmm. Let's have a reverb. Uh, Helix has really cool. Um, you can go stereo effects. This glitz reverb is awesome. It sound, it's like a really nice, big modulated verb. Mm -hmm. And let's put it here. Okay, and so it's it's easy as that. And yeah. then you can change all the parameters. And so now we've built like a really basic patch. Can you save this one? Real yeah, quick? so just... saving is really easy. You just hit the save button. Okay. And then it's gonna ask you to name it. So you can name it Q preset. Mm -hmm. Okay, save. Awesome, there we go. <laughs> Done. But you can name it whatever you want. I'm someone though, I'm really new to mm -hmm. all these effects. I don't even really know what a lot of right. them do. Uh, just not an expert at it quite mm -hmm. yet. 
how about like finding some pre-made patches yeah. that can save me some time in, in building building yeah. these presets? So yeah, so one of the great things about Helix is the community around it, especially mm -hmm. for uh, praise and worship. Mm -hmm. And so um, like if you go to Facebook, there's a, a Helix worship team users, I think is the name of the group. Mm -hmm. And thousands of people in that in that group that use the Helix on Sundays and offer great like tips. If you have questions, they get answered really fast. Uh, but there's also a, a community of patch builders, mm -hmm. specifically for praise and worship, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that have patches available for you. Worship Tutorials is one. Mm -hmm. So Bradford Mitchell and I develop all the patches at Worship Tutorials for the Helix. And uh, we have a free AC30 patch. Okay. I think it's one of our best patches that we have. Awesome. Okay, so this is the free AC30 preset that mm -hmm. you get from Worship Tutorials. Uh, and it comes with... Uh, in the last, in the Q preset that we just built, which is a dumb name, mm -hmm. uh, we used a stock cabinet. So you can, you can put, you, when you add the amp in, you can have the amp and cab in one block. Mm -hmm. Each one of these is a block. You can have the amp, like you think of it as a, some amps come with a head and a cabinet. Mm -hmm. So you can think of it that way or a combo. Um, I always like to do the amp and the cab separately because you can, you can do different, you know, you have a little more flexibility. And uh, in the Helix, you can load these things called IRs, which are impulse responses. Uh, and impulse responses, typically, uh, they can be different things, but for Helix, usually what it means is a, is a cabinet. So I think of it as a guitar cabinet that's mic'd, and it has, it's basically the, the model of a mic'd cab. And you can get third-party impulse responses, which, in my opinion, sound better than the stock line six cabs. Mm -hmm. And so Worship Tutorials partners with a company called Tone Junkie. And Tone Junkie makes IR cabinets that sound really good. Mm -hmm. So in our free AC30 patch, you get with it a, uh, a Tone Junkie Celestian Gold IR that's mic'd with a Royer 121 and an SM7B. Okay. And it matches really well with the Vox AC30. Wow. Okay, so that all comes with it. And so if you just kind of go through this patch, it has volume pedal, which is assigned to Expression 2, mm -hmm. has a compressor, has three drives, you get a Klon, you get an 808, and you get, or sorry, a Klon and a Timmy, and an 808. Mm -hmm. And the Timmy is not assigned to a button, but you can. So one other thing we've done with it is we've made this button turn the gain on the amp up, okay. which you can't do in real life unless you have somebody sitting back there waiting for the right moment to turn the gain on your amp up. Huh. Right? Yeah. And so you push this button and the drive goes up. Okay. If, if we look at the amp, so if you watch this parameter right here, it boosts oh, yeah. it up. Yep. So like it, turning an amp up sounds really good. Yeah. Sounds, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so you can do that. You can make any of these buttons literally do anything to any effect, yep. which is really cool. Yep. So it gives you a ton of flexibility. The next thing then is the, the cabinet and then you hit like the wet effects. And so we come down to the next row and you've got your, your uh, delays, so you've got an eighth note delay, a dotted eighth delay, and a quarter delay, and they're all different types of mm -hmm. delay, mm -hmm. so they sound a little different. And then you've got this swells button, which actually turns on, if you watch, if you hit this, this whole row of effects are gonna turn on, oh, wow. right? Yeah. And so um, it turns three things on. You've got a, a big, is a big modulated delay, uh -huh. like a really washy delay, mm -hmm. and then two big reverbs. And so you hit that and you can do volume swells and it sounds glorious, okay? <laughs> and, then, and then there's a looper, which gives you that looper functionality. And the other thing that we build into our patches are called snapshots. So this is in stomp box mode mm -hmm. right here. So each one of these buttons is kind of assigned to a different effect mm -hmm. or a group of effects. Yeah. In snapshot mode, you can make one button turn on any number of things that you want. So you can get a completely yeah. different sound at the push of a button. So if you watch what happens here, when you push this, go from here to clean, like it changes like eight different things with yeah. one button press, wow. which is great. Man, especially for, like stomp yeah, everywhere especially on the floor. for worship yeah. leaders. Like yeah. if you're leading worship yep. from electric guitar, yeah. which is a very normal thing to like want to go from like a basic rhythm drive sound yeah. to swells, like if your pastor is going to come up and pray or something, yeah. it's just one button. Man. You don't have to like do all the tap dance and then one button to get you back. Yeah. So now, mm -hmm. I want to hear you demo some of these sounds from this free worship from tutorial the free patch.
So can you show me a little bit of what your patch setup looks like for any given Sunday? And sure. how you set this up for a set list? Yeah, so um, let's just do this. So the presets are, are built into set lists. And so um, I have this one called Sunday, right? And so the last time I used the Helix on a Sunday, mm -hmm. so I build my patches out per song. Mm -hmm. And at Worst Tutorials, we have song-based patches as well. Mm -hmm. And so I have... Um, we played Lion and the Lamb, then we did Good Grace, then we did Overcome, then we did Yes I Will. Yep. And then what I do is I throw in my favorite stock patch. In case we do anything different, I can go to like a, just a base patch if I want. Okay. But so like Lion and the Lamb, so this is how I would load out on a Sunday, right? So here's Lion and the Lamb, and I have it set, I started well, I started on the rhythm on this pretty particular weekend, but yeah. like that's the lead line yeah. right there. Oh, okay. Then I go into the chorus. First chorus is swells, mm. verse two, then the big chorus, then the bridge, and then there's just a basic rhythm sound. Yeah. Next song, preset up. Good grace starts on swells. Yeah. And then like the wow. rhythm part comes in. So it's for me on a Sunday. It, and, it, and I do this with any, like, I use other modelers sometimes, and I yeah. do the same thing. I use song-based patches. Yeah. And, and Bradford, for example, doesn't like doing this. He likes to be a little more creative in the moment. Yeah. I just like, especially when I lead worship. Yeah. I just like to be able to push one button to get to the next sound. Totally. Right? You know what? You could even make it even easier, I think, because yeah. I, I haven't done this myself, but I yeah. know you can actually automate with Ableton. You can. Patch yeah, you can MIDI in. Yep. That's you totally could awesome. do that. Yeah, that would be right up your alley. Well, this is such an awesome setup. So songs yeah. through here, through the presets, yeah, and, and, I and just, song and sections. Yeah, and I just put them in order. The yeah. next song, I just hit that. Yeah. Oh, that We did the acoustic version of Overcome, so it's a lot of just clean stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, and so um, that's how I would go through a Sunday. Then we did Yes, I Will. And like I said, if anything else came up, I could just go up to my matchless patch. That's mm -hmm. like my main patch. I could go into stomp box mode, and now I can just turn on and off anything I want. Yep. Like it's super convenient how you can do it. So I really think that covers the basis of how to start using this uh, tool for your electric guitar yeah. rig. What about for some other instruments that you could plug yeah. in, like an acoustic guitar or bass? Sure. So you can actually, what's really cool about this is you can have four different things plugged into it at once. Mm -hmm. And I'll have different ch chains basically, or different channels. Yeah. But um, I use this with acoustic guitar too. Mm -hmm. And so we have an acoustic patch and I can, I can show it to you real quick. Mm -hmm. So here's my basic acoustic patch. This is like an LR Bags preamp on tons of steroids. So what I have here, I don't have snapshots for it, but like I have a compressor, which I can turn on and off. Mm -hmm. I have chorus. If you yeah. want to go every, if you want to play every rose has its thorn on a Sunday morning, <laughs> yeah. turn that on. <laughs> okay. Uh, delays. I've got different kinds of reverbs. I've got plate verb, spring verb. I've got modulated reverb in here. Yeah. I have tremolo because it's fun. I mean, half the, most of the time for acoustic, you just want uh, just the compressor and maybe some EQ and yeah. that's it, right? Yeah. But if you want to go a little crazy with effects, you can. Mm -hmm. And it is nice on acoustic, I have an ambient swell and it's the same like kind of layout of reverbs and delays. Yeah. But it get, you can play pads with your acoustic guitar, which yep. is really cool. Yep. Um, but then down here, uh, something that I built into the acoustic patch is this is like notch filters. Okay. And so this is like your E string. Like I, I matched up the frequencies of where the E, the A, and the D string always like feed back. Yeah. So I've got basically like, you know how you can notch out on the pair of DI from LR bags? Mm -hmm. You can do the same here. Okay. So if you turn this on, it notches out. There's oh, the wow. E string, that's the A string, that's the D string, and that's the G string. Yeah. Depending on which one of them is giving you problems. Wow. If you need it. And then there's a looper built into it as well, uh -huh. which is fun for acoustic. Awesome. So, um, it works really well for acoustic. I think it's like it's a far more flexible. I mean, granted, it's way more money than like an LR Bags preamp, mm -hmm. but it does so much more. Another thing that I think would be important to know if I were just getting started is how to change what's displayed on these switches. Okay. And so that's in the global settings, which you can get to. Like if you're in the in the patch, you can push this button, global settings. And it's the foot switches menu. Mm -hmm. So first thing you can do is turn the whether they're touch sensitive on or off. Um, I like them on, but you know, if you play barefoot, like, and you touch a one, you, you know, if you're just playing at home and you yeah. touch it with your foot, it'll like start changing stuff sometimes. Oh, okay. You might not want that. Yeah. Um, the next thing, uh, is the preset mode. What, and this is what, um, shows you what's displayed. So let's just start from the beginning. The eight presets will show you just the, the eight presets around the one you're at. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so if you want to be able to change presets from here, that's that's what you'd want. Uh, preset stomp, that'll give you presets up here and stomps down here. Okay. And stomps are the individual effects mm -hmm. in the patch. Uh, stomp preset just switches that. Preset snap gives you presets here, snapshots here. Mm -hmm. Snapshots again are the like the combinations of effects that you can set up. Okay. Uh, then you can switch that snap on top, presets on the bottom. And then you can have snaps and stomps, mm -hmm. which a lot of people I think would like because they can have, you know, their snapshots up here and then individual effect access here. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh oh, we got out of there because I touched something. Okay. And then um, the last one is, or and then it switches that stomp and snap. Mm -hmm. But the last one is where I like to set it. Okay. And that's eight snapshots, so you get all your snapshots here, uh -huh. and then if you hit the mode button, you go all stomps. Oh, so yeah. you can, with the mode button, that's you cool. can switch between your stomps and your snapshots. Yeah. At the push of a button, and it gives you the most access to stuff. That's how, that's how we set our patches up to be used. Well, thanks so much, Brian. I know now, like, I have a much better concept of what yeah. this guy can accomplish, and I really understand the value in having a sure. piece of gear yeah. like this in this, this Line 6 uh, Helix modeler. Like, Wow, that can just like save you so much money actually in the long it run. Really Even does. though it's like yeah. up, up front, it could be a lot, but yeah. man, the capability you have, the types of instruments you can use it with, uh, and then being able to go to your website and download uh, those pre-made patches mm -hmm. to save a bunch of time. Um, and I think probably just working in your pre-made patches will actually help teach someone who's new to this, like yeah. myself, how I could go set up and build my own right. too. And uh, you can just learn by just seeing what other people yeah. are doing out there. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna make sure in the description of this video we have links to all of the, the gear as well as the patches that we mentioned. So just check out the links below. Uh, you'll be able to pick up one of these guys uh, yourself and uh, I'll make sure I'll link to Brian's website. We'll list out all of the different uh, patches that we covered, including his free one, um, as well as some of the premium yeah. patches and the, like the singer-songwriter patch, that's one of yours that's as well, cool, right? Yeah. Um, so all that stuff is gonna be below down in the description. Let us know if you have any questions about this stuff down below in the comments as well and if you use a helix let us know if you have any tips for uh, how you are utilizing yours yeah. in your worship ministry teach me something new i'm gonna watch the comments <laughs> i want to learn something from you about the helix and of course if you want to learn more and hear the helix in action make sure you go check out brian's youtube channel they're making a ton of great content around this they're amazing guitar players i'm a oh, thank you. average guitar player i'm a worship leader <laughs> guitar player me uh, too you could say. for the but, most part but yeah they're making lots of content go subscribe to their channel go follow them go check out worshiptutorials.com and I just want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you found it helpful, just hit that thumbs up button and share it with your friends in ministry. You can check out some related videos right on over there. And don't forget to subscribe to the Church Front channel so you don't miss out on any of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry.